and everything. Yeah. And uh, I think that they're both of their names are um, attached to the same uh, object. I mean, I think it's a. I, I mean, I think it's. I think it's really important. I think it's the responsibility right now of people who have a system that they can afford to extend out and basically create incubation and create that. If you like, um, like they're the grand tree and they need to allow seeds to blossom. You know, I think it's an incredible responsibility that large companies are greedy and don't take seriously enough that um, they should have that responsibility and they should give back. Um, which is what I think it's about, because I think that's um, a cycle for people's circles. Yeah, there's the cycle, and I think, interestingly, um, uh, if companies had done it small, how much further we would be. And it, it creates stability, and there's so much insecurity in, uh, in this industry, but I think in the world generally. And that's um, based on this less so few pathways upwards, and they seem to be less and less. I mean, the truth is, we couldn't afford to. It's really hard. I mean, honestly, if I had money, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, I love the idea, and sometimes, you know, we have um, one of the girls at the moment is an ex-student of mine, and she's wonderful, but uh, I'm not quite sure how she'd ever survive in the industry of fashion to some extent. I always tell her, you're a lot designer, you're an artist. She said, no, 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 I really want to do fashion. I'm like, are you crazy? And I would love the idea of being able to as a label. I think it's absolutely so strikes perfectly with who we are. If we had money to like do that, I would just think I would just cherish that. Um, we can barely survive, but people have tons of money shouldn't do it. And I think, um, it, but it, I think it shouldn't just be like done like there's more of a. I guess, you know, I see, and I don't know what I want to do, but I guess they're, Irish. yeah, they're tires and rubber. Yeah. So it's more of um, a substance. I actually think uh, fashion companies should do it. Um, I think labels should do it. I think they should be more confident, more elegant about the power that they have. I think they're very confident. it's a bit like, yeah. But I, I think when the beginning of H&M started to give that to these kind of big um, celebrity designers and people like Madonna and da 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 and um, and I kind of think I would be so much more in love with her if she was <coughs> elegant enough to say, my name will make the money. Like, if it gave it to you, unfortunately, you just don't have the mother's power. <laughs> but how elegant it would be if she said, it's my name, but these are the ten young men and women I'm going to employ, and I'm going to debate with each of them, and give them that opportunity to sit with Madonna, and for them to create different stories with me, maybe, one about my performance, one about my, you know, that then could pr produce small collectives that would be for h &M. Like, to me, that would have been much more wonderful. And that, I think, would have been a way, kind of, um, a little bit, like, the suggestion, if you like, because ultimately, I understand why Madonna sells H&M or why Comte de Garcon, they would never pick us. We sell about two things, you know? They sell resilience, and that's why it works. But I think there is a place for that, and I think it's important. Yeah. Outside of the funding element of that, the idea of collaborations and kind of multidisciplinary collaborations are really important, and it's been really important for us. I mean, like, you know, we work with David Asher, the architect, and we did a really great thing with him. And I was talking to um, Claudette yesterday about this importance of understanding how other people process how other people work. I think it's really important. So to, to, take, to subtract the financial, uh, like people funding things, I think it's really important for you to go out there and kind of find people that, that you would like to work with and don't be so kind of narrow when you're looking. Don't be so kind of, you know, search the whole horizon because, you know, like, I, from David, we learned loads. We we just worked with Mike Figgis, the film director, and I, you know, and and what you do is you kind of look at somebody else's process. They're looking at your process, that, and somewhere in between in this collaboration, that there's this really uh, amazing kind of um, magical uh, situation that happens where it's almost like a, a kind of a, a vibration between between both parties and their processes and how they interact because. 
he was this jazz musician, and the first project we did with him, we were like, we had this deadline, and we were like, look, what are we going to do for this exhibition? And he was like, oh, it's all right, you know, we'll just shoot some pictures, we'll turn up, we'll put them up on the wall, and we were like, no, 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 we've got, we have this idea, we have that idea. But actually, you know, it kind of, it, in kind of studying somebody else's process, it kind of releases you a little bit. It's like, yeah, you know, you need to be kind of more confident. You need to kind of just let things happen and uh, and look for kind of the mistake, if you like, and, and work with the mistake and don't feel like you have to be in such control of all your ideas all the time. So, the, 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 I, I get your question about, you know, should so-and-so come and fund this person? But if, if that's not happening, I, I think that you should work right, with right. people, yeah, right. yeah, and see other processes. And experience them. Like I think work with the drama. Yeah. Very random. Yeah. You know, design a skirt, work with the drama. How does yeah. that what is that skirt about? How does yeah. that work? That's so interesting. You know? Like who and it's also about knowing what do you have around you? You don't have to search very far. Like what does your best friend do? Just do the collaboration regardless of you could be a lawyer. Lawyers are great, they make loads of money, or they have potential to make loads of money. You know? And they get paid by the second. What does that mean? How do they think? Uh, how do they sit? Where do they stand? I mean, yeah, it's just you know what I mean? Those are the, there are so much out there. Again, it's about not doing what exists. I want you guys to make me more jealous. You know, I want you to have ideas. I'm damn. And I have that idea. You know, that's that that's a vibrant world. That's people pushing from underneath, and I feel that that's not happening enough. I really want it to happen more. And again, if I had more money, I would definitely drop down because I'd be like, okay, test you out. Here's some go wrong come back and shout. Um, I wish that was the current one. I guess it does in places. And you know, when it happens, often it's with the obvious people that make the commercial connection, because that's also when that when those kind of collaborations are offered up. It can be frustrating if you're putting your work forward and you get closer and closer and you see who gets picked in the end. You're like, you know, don't get drawn into what you think that they want. Stay true to yourself, even if you don't win. Or you don't get what you think is the win. I think it's more important to remain. You've got to live with what you do for the rest of your life, and so I think it's going to be better and stronger if you are happy to not get it. If you know what I mean by that, because I think that's the other danger is that those kind of relationships become drawn by the, too much by the commerce. I don't people. I don't think people. I don't know enough companies who are elegant enough with their confidence to give money and have more creative freedom, if you like, yeah. with answers. Cause so, you know, then again, keep going for those things, but again, like what you said, find your own kind of connections, I guess. And, um, and also the kind of extension of that is that, to, to, to give an example from our point of view, it's like, oh, um, we want to do some 3D scanning, but we can't afford to buy a 3D scanner, so let's build a 3D scanner. So you go on the internet and you learn all about how to build a 3D scanner, and you build that 3D scanner. But in, in, in the process of learning about it, that's all kind of seeping into your mind, and, you're, and it's kind of almost like locking on to all your different ways of processing. So, so then you get to the point where you're like, and on that journey you start um, looking at structured light because you can scan with structured light and that kind of, and then that starts to make you look at how you photograph differently, how you how you light something differently. And all of a sudden, all those little elements, you can kind of drag them into the way that you work, they, they, they kind of latch on. So it's like the, you, your kind of process just keeps growing and growing and growing. And um, so, yeah, I think that you need to kind of, you know, I get very frustrated when when students work in a very kind of uh, formulaic way. I, I think that you know, don't use Illustrator. Um, pull the top off it. See how it works. What, 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 what build your own Illustrator. You know, that learn to code. But you know, the the, the, the great mantra: program or be programmed. I, and it doesn't matter if you do it in a clumsy way, because the, the, there's poetry in the kind of state. There's poetry in kind of not quite knowing how to do something. You know, we always, you know, they said the kind of the age-old thing about taking your kind of disadvantage and turning it into an advantage. You know, and and there's poetry in kind of being quite clumsy within areas. You know, I was talking to um, Claudette's boyfriend, who's um, the um, a mathematician, and I was saying that sometimes I feel quite kind of. I feel like a bit like a charlatan, like I'm kind of dipping around. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I can code, I can do this, I do a bit of this. But, but I, I, I think there's something quite kind of, 
I think there's some poetry there in it, and it's okay to kind of just dip in and find something that you want, and then drag it away and bring it back into your world. Because I think that, in a way, that becomes more unique rather than just falling into this area and going, no, I will learn this from, from A to B, I'll do all the tutorials. No, I, you know, I use pieces of software, and I don't even know how to use it all in its entirety. I just stumble around in some of them. But I, I, I enjoy that because I'm kind of approaching it in such a kind of naive way that that I, I, I'm not following the formula of somebody saying, okay, well, this is what you do to do this, and this is what you do to, you know, create the turntable, this is what you do to do this. So I, 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 that's another thing that's really important, you know. I always, like, want to, someone to create something there where I can start kind of, almost like chopping off chunks of software and start recompiling them back together so that they're more personalised to the way that I work. And then, and then I can keep moving that around. And there's some guys in... Um, in, um, in Belgium uh, um, doing an MA and they've done a big um, a visual uh, coding language which is a lot more modular and um, so uh, it's called Nodebox. I don't, does anyone know about this? But, um, you should check that out actually. Because I've been trying to learn um, processing and um, this is um, an open source language. It's a really great open source community as well. Like everyone um, is really kind of friendly and you can kind of, if you can't do something, you and ask people, and, and people are really kind of generous with their time and, and, and really helpful. And you know, we'll post you a piece of code and they'll say, Oh, well, this will do this, or this will do that. Um, so, yeah, processing is good. Nodebox is a lot more kind of visual. It's like you just have these nodes, and if you plug them in in different ways, they, they affect the image in different ways. But you, you know, it, 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 the, the, the ability to change all the different variables is really quite, um, quite good. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. If you, uh, if you mentioned H and M, I wanted to know if you buy shops like H and M or Topshop or Forever Twenty One, and that was your statement. I'm not lucky. I have a wardrobe. <laughs> 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 the only thing I get paid. You wear on your own. Always. Always. Men's wear. And uh, um, no, I haven't been shopping anywhere like that for a long time. Um, uh, it's interesting, I mean, I don't know, it's hard when you have no money, I understand that. Uh, at the same time... What do you think of it? Do you see it as a democratic way to create... We were part of protests for quite a long time. We were part of protests for quite a long time. And I remember at one point, I... Not protest specifically against the issue. But I remember us coming back, we did a protest over the weekend. Well, no, the, the protest that happened around the end of the century, just before the towers went down, basically, there was a lot of... I was kind of labelled anti-capitalism, yeah. but, but, but for us it was more kind of anti-banality and anti-kind yeah. of reducing the menu smaller and smaller and smaller. But there have been a lot of books like Naomi, oh, what was she called? Yeah, that's not a logo. Yeah, no logo, like Mid to Late Lunch. There's a lot of writing that was really about, you know, particularly for women and their working rights, Across the world. You, are, you, are, you, are you referring to again, the ethics of the business? Yeah, also, yeah. but you know, there is always the question is, okay, fashion now became available yeah. for more people, which is a good part. Yeah. But we are losing a lot the, you know, the way to make an honest living or the way to be unique is getting lost in the way. Yeah. So the question is, is um, you know. And how do you think that sustainability will affect? Stores like that. How do you mean? Uh, I, I, I like, for instance, like everyone. At one point, everyone would go out and buy coffee and not care and, uh, about the exploitation of the coffee makers. So that, and then slowly, people start buying fair trade and kind of easing their uh -huh. conscience. Uh, I'm not sure do you think that that will happen with fashion? I, I, I don't know. I have, as a consumer and as a you know person in the design world, I always have this kind of you know yeah. thoughts about it. I'm not sure what is right and what is wrong, and I wanted to know how do you see it? Do you see it, um, you know, as a way, maybe, if an H&M will offer you a collaboration, would you say yes, or...? But they won't. Sorry, I But they won't. In the ideal world, will... Um, In an ideal world, I'd like, a, I'd like an offer from someone else. <laughs> I mean, personally, for me, I agree. The word that's important, and what you're saying, is lack of individuality, the disappearance of that. There's a guy that we love, Bruce Sterling, and he calls Facebook for Bella Chic, you know, and 
oh my god, we're all kind of, we're all being kind of squashed into something before we realize it. Um, I think it's really important that people build their own clothes. I mean, when I was a kid, I, just, I built some wacky stuff, but it was really important. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, really, I look back and I think, oh, oh, lady. You know, how did you walk out in that? But I made, I really made a lot of my own clothes. It was really important. I wanted to, I wanted a pair of trousers with a neck cut out the side, and I had to make them because they weren't there. And um, I think, uh, I don't think you have to be wacky and extreme to make your, uh, to create your own identity, but I think it's really important. And uh, I think they're just choices. It's a consumer choice, and little, little steps that you can make. I think, I went through a stage of feeling really guilty um, I even looked at like an Adidas trainer, if you know what I mean. And I remember people, what well, they were called black spot trainers. Yeah. They were through ad busters and you became, they were terrible design. But I was like, no, we're not going to buy Nike. You know, it's like being a vegan <laughs> consumer goods, you know. So I wore them. I wore them. I hated them. I can't remember that the studio. Exactly. They were only like big fat toes. <laughs> oh my God, I still have them. I can't. And so you gained shares in them. And it was, they were trying really hard. I think they still exist. I think they've got better at design. And I realized we need to balance your choices in your life. And uh, yes, I have a pair of Puma or whatever now, but I don't have 100 pairs. I think, again, you can balance your choices a little bit, not kind of suffer kind of Catholic guilt issues. But, um, but I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think every choice you make is important. And so if you can not shop there and you can influence by offering, making, developing, I think, great. Really great. I think it will be an important route that you could take, and then that's something passionate that you can do. That doesn't mean that you're making clothes that are really expensive, but you're offering something, and you help. I mean, I feel it. Sometimes it frustrates me. I mean, people realize that they just bought one dress a year from us. It could help us survive. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I feel that. And I think that I think it's about education of the consumer, and you have choices. And you can consider, and you can, yeah, you know, these foods more more expensive because they're organic or they're from the farmers market or whatever. But eat less, you know. I think it's. I want there to be a farmer. I don't want it just to be squashy chickens in, you know, factories and people using GM products. I want to have a sense of responsibility of the world that I live in, and that's about what you buy, whether it's your knickers, your t-shirt, or your food. Um, otherwise. It, yeah, it's just like run by greedy companies. Same time, you know, if you need to buy a cheap t-shirt to make it, then buy it from them, you know, if you want. I mean, I just think you have to not, I don't know, I think there's a balance of, okay. yeah. but yeah, I feel, I feel strongly about I mean, that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's an interesting debate, the, the whole kind of slow fashion debate that's been oh. going on for like, the last decade now. There's it's also in my head. That's yeah, 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 yeah. And then this goes back to, well, well, hang on a minute, if you're not selling lots of clothes, how can you make money out of them? Because, you know, if, if you're encouraging people to keep clothes for longer, which which effectively you should. And I, I, I kind of think we work that way. I mean, everything we make, is it, it, we try and make it the best quality possible. But, and I, when, we, when I see things on eBay being sold, they're so almost like a kind of collector's thing as opposed to just a garment. Like people go, oh, this was a nice, this is nice to be a part of someone's collection, and 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 and, 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 and that's a good feeling in a way. I think with the H and M thing, uh, there's, uh, especially Top Shop, there's this kind of exploitative level to it with with students and young designers. But it's a kind of trade off, isn't it? It's like you kind of, you know, they are exploiting the the, the student without a doubt. You know, they're making a massive amount of money from them for from paying them a small amount. And the trade off is that maybe they get known, but the, you know, you get dumped within two years because they take the next student on. So. It, 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 yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a difficult debate. Yeah. I mean, and, and this goes back yeah. to almost like, um, I, I've forgotten his name. Um, he, no, it, well, it goes back to his point about this umbrella system as opposed yeah. to just kind of taking, uh, you know, and kind of being more exploitative about it. But then, what, you know, how does that model work for them? And I guess uh, I don't really have the answers to this. I think that this is this point where everything is like really in flux and, um, and it's almost up to you as a generation of students to start to kind of unpick this and say, okay, well, you know, again, going back to Zoe's um, point about, you know, you, you, you make fashion here, but maybe you do something else as well. It's not about just be, being kind of like a fashion designer. Maybe it is about kind of broadening this width of what you do. And maybe people engage, you know, maybe you, um, 
maybe you make this amazing dress and then you make this amazing kind of, I don't know, but, um, fantastic kind of jams and spreads. Uh, I don't know, it's just like, you, you can't, but it's all part of this kind of, it's all part of your language. I, th th then maybe it kind of, it, it kind of works. I, I, d I don't know, I mean, and I do you know. do you shop in those places, or do you go elsewhere? Do you make uh, an effort? Or? Once in a while. Yeah, yeah. The, the big confession, but the, yeah. And so, do you feel like that lack of individual expression is just kind of disappearing, or? Um, I find it. I don't know. Maybe London people are more fashion conscious and thinking about, you know, creating their own independent yeah. vision. Maybe even in Tel Aviv more, but I live in Jerusalem. Yeah. So um, I I really see people that. Um, make other people choose for them yeah. what they wear and how they look and how they design their bodies and for me that's a shame instead of creating something that is true to this place and yeah. this time yeah. you know companies somewhere in I mean it's an important debate I think it's important to keep the yes, question alive and and because really ultimately really. those corporates are always going to exist and yeah. if we don't continue to every now and then make sure we can all kind of sleep a little bit. We don't mean to, but we're, you know, it's like we've all got busy lives, we've all got things to do, yeah, we make before you know it, ooh, you know. And they're like funny little habits, like turning the tap off when you're brushing your teeth, whatever, things. They're just habits. You just change them, and then they become habitual, and then you influence somebody, maybe. And I think mm -hmm. it is important to keep it alive, keep questioning. That's really, really important. Otherwise, the world, just before you know, has gone that way. You know, so I think important question, and definitely, you know, um, maybe that's part of your journey about what you look and how you say it, and what what does it mean, and what are the stores, and what do people look like, and what are their choices, and what are their options. It'll make a great study. You know, to me, amazing study. Like, what is Jerusalem? What is Tel Aviv? How are they different? What, well, how many shops? What's vintage? What's it? What's the price point? Make a great study on it and uh, find there's some, there's got to be money that would then print that or give you a little place to display that. You do a little, bring forums together, you know, find answers. That's like a six month project for you and come back to us. <laughs> <laughs>